Before we get into today's sermon, or motivation, whichever you prefer to call it, I would like to say a little prayer to God. Father God, I ask that you use me as your vessel to get your word out to those who need to hear it. I ask that you steady my voice and allow me to convey your words as intended. I ask that you continue to bless those who seek you and continue to bless those that are on the fence. Open the ears of those who need to hear this particular sermon. In Jesus' name, amen. This issue results in the damnation of more people than we can comprehend. We are called to live holy lives. The Bible repeatedly instructs us to be holy, as stated in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 16, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Furthermore, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 urges us to pursue peace and holiness, emphasizing that without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Undoubtedly, holiness and righteousness are still essential. They remain as God's requirements for both you and me. Let me emphasize this unequivocally. We must live lives that embody holiness and righteousness. Nevertheless, there is a dangerous pitfall we must all be vigilant against self-righteousness. In my humble opinion, self-righteousness sends more Christians to hell than any other sin. The problem with self-righteousness lies in its nature as a distinct religion. It revolves around the worship of oneself, with man as the center. This was precisely the major issue with the Pharisees, who dedicated themselves to self and self-righteousness. Self-righteousness fixates on man's position in the world and his personal achievements. It is inherently self-centered. When Jesus Christ appeared 2,000 years ago, he confronted the Pharisees, who were steeped in self-righteousness, and declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He revealed himself as the living bread, the water of life, and the light of the world. By doing so, he redirected their focus from their self-centered religion to himself. Salvation does not revolve around oneself, health, or a checklist of do's and don'ts. It centers on the person of Jesus Christ. Self-righteousness is highlighted in Romans chapter 10 verses 3 through 4. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. The Apostle Paul lamented the self-righteousness of the Jews, recognizing that it displayed arrogance towards God's grace. Instead of accepting the righteousness that comes through faith in Christ Jesus, they established their righteousness and proudly rejected the righteousness offered by faith. Self-righteousness is sinful because no one can be justified by adhering to the law alone. The law existed before Christ arrived in the world. If salvation could be attained solely through the law, there would have been no need for Christ's incarnation and the immense suffering he endured on our behalf. Self-righteousness cannot be discussed without acknowledging the law. This is because self-righteousness is born out of seeking righteousness through fulfilling the law. Numerous biblical references demonstrate that self-righteousness does not justify anyone. Instead, it obstructs people from reaching heaven. Regrettably, Many fail to realize or acknowledge that the righteousness of God, received by faith, does not depend on the human efforts invested in self-righteousness. Scripture unequivocally reveals that self-righteousness does not save. Rejecting the work of Christ in establishing righteousness is to belittle the gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 9 affirms, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Consequently, our salvation does not stem from our self-righteous works, but it is solely a gift from God, received through faith in the finished work of Christ. Anyone too proud to accept that their salvation depends on Christ's payment rejects the opportunity to enter heaven. If self-righteousness alone could secure our place in heaven, Jesus would not have had to endure dying for our sins. Jesus shared a parable about self-righteousness and its consequences, recounted in Luke chapter 18 verses 9 through 14, to some who were confident of their righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable, two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. 
He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man, rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The Pharisee boasted about his actions and emphasized his goodness. He approached God with pride and self-righteousness. Conversely, the tax collector, recognizing his own sinfulness, humbly sought God's mercy. Humility carries great favor with God. God resists the proud but extends grace to the humble. Self-righteousness is one of the gravest sins a person can allow into their life. It manifests as a belief in one's superiority and moral ascendancy over others. Sadly, the church is not immune to self-righteousness, as many individuals within it look down on others. A true Christian does not embrace self-righteousness, but rather submits to the righteousness of God. Failure to submit to God's righteousness reveals arrogance and ignorance, as stated in Romans 10 verse 3. We are far from perfect. Though we have surrendered our lives to Christ, we cannot, by our own efforts, attain righteousness. Even if we appear righteous, our righteousness is comparable to filthy rags. Righteousness is not earned through our actions alone. It is bestowed upon us because of the finished work of Christ on the cross. We cannot achieve salvation through self-righteousness. Instead, we need the righteousness of God. When we surrender to Christ, we submit ourselves to God and clothe ourselves in His righteousness. Through Christ, we become recipients of God's righteousness, as stated in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. This demonstrates the immense love of God. He made His righteousness available to us, and through faith in Christ, we become recipients of His righteousness. Anyone attempting to be righteous through their own power rejects God and His love, committing a grave sin. Self-righteous individuals are often challenging to identify as their sin operates subtly. Unlike those who exhibit obvious sins such as drunkenness or dishonesty, self-righteous people hide their sinfulness. You may unknowingly harbor self-righteousness. If you believe that praying or fasting more than others makes you holier, you exhibit self-righteousness. If you constantly focus on your own abilities as the source of your Christianity and its preservation, you display self-righteousness. Dismissing the preaching of pastors because you believe you know better and it doesn't apply to you is yet another manifestation of self-righteousness. Self-righteous individuals pass judgment and condemnation on others, utilizing their own lives as a measuring stick. Throughout my experiences, I have observed that self-righteous individuals condemn one sin while secretly engaging in worse transgressions. They even justify their own sins. In contrast, consider the humility of the Apostle Paul, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Paul's declaration of being the chief of sinners was not a display of false humility. He truly understood himself and acknowledged the extent of his past actions. He genuinely believed that his sins made him more accountable before God than others. Such a confession does not stem from self-righteousness.